live at the University of Tennessee. And uh, it's been said a few times, and it will be said a few more before uh, this time tomorrow. This is the epicenter of college football today. And uh, it gives me even more pleasure to say hello to the chancellor of the University of Tennessee, Chancellor Dunde Plowman. And uh, thank you. So great to see you. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to have you all here and to be at this moment in time. Well, uh, I am going to say something I said uh, to a small group uh, a year ago. I was speaking to some students around the corner at a place that I, I, I learned this business and without it wouldn't be here today. But y you did something as a university leader that I think too few in your position have done. You stood up for integrity, even though it, it very possibly was going to cost your university a great deal. And a little over a year and a half later, look where we are. And and I, I <laughs> Chancellor, it, it would not have happened because I don't I don't know that much about the world, but I do know college athletics. And too often, uh, people in in leadership positions like yours get run over for uh, the 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 to expedite uh, w the wins and the losses. And I just have to give you uh, enormous uh, credit for, for doing what was right and, and making changes that were necessary. Thank you. You know, a leader doesn't get to pick the issues that come their way, but, uh, and, and no one's ever prepared for the hard stuff, but you do what you think is right. And um, I'm so thrilled about where we are. I'm, I'm really thrilled about it. But there was a period in there that was a dark period for Tennessee. And I had the support of a, my president and the board all the way. And uh, I feel really, it all turned as soon as we hired Danny White. And he, he made a bunch, yeah, let's hear it. And the rest is his story. He's made some great hires. But yeah, I mean, it, those were hard days and you never wanna have to go through that. But I feel, really um, strengthened by the joy that our fans are experiencing right now. And, and this is more of a, of a leadership question then because it, it isn't, this isn't the time or place, especially with situations so unresolved to, to go through uh, it minute by minute. But as a leader, you're, you're trained, but you never know. Right. Uh, so what gives you the strength to do what, is clearly right, although it, it, it's not expedient. It, it may not even be, yeah, let me say it may not. It wasn't popular no. among some people right. in this town. Right. Well, you know, somebody asked me the other day about that, and I said, I think it's always hardest to step forward and act with courage when you feel alone. And I didn't in that situation. I had some good counsel. I sought out people confidentially who helped me think through how do you go hire an AD? What do you look for? Uh, and and the, the, what led up to that, I, I had really great support here. So I wasn't alone in it. Okay. And I think your whole life prepares you in some ways for making those kind of decisions. When you're, when you're on that high wire, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, is, what is that feeling like? Because most of us never really have to make a decision like that. Well, one thing I wasn't quite prepared for, I should have, is that all your colleagues in the national sports news would be so interested in the story. <laughs> so I should have known that. Uh, that and, and I remember my son calling me and saying, I just heard your voice on Dan Patrick, Mom. <laughs> They're replaying you every 30 minutes or whatever. And that's, that's sort of a weird thing. Uh, but, you know, I think you just keep going like wh what you think is right. And then you just keep like, okay, what do we need to do now? What do we need to do now? Greg sankey has been a great help to me uh, from the very first moment. So I think when you reach out and ask for help from people, it, I don't think of it as a sign of weakness. I think it's the way you figure out, figure the path forward. And that's kind of what I did. And it, it, is, it is a, it is, it's a, it's a moment in time that I, that I hope will, will be cemented and, and, and taught because I think in, in I, I, I am, I am not in the world of leadership. I'm a talk show host, but, but I think those who are uh, do, do often study Right. moments of crisis and this, right. this was in in terms of this footprint an existential crisis that this university hung in the ballots and i think that's what makes this so special that uh, this was in J december january of 2021 and the date is october 14th 22 we're not that far removed no. from it <laughs> no i it, i think too you know when you're in a position like mine 
I, I, I'm very aware that I'm the steward of this place. I'm the steward of these people's hopes and their dreams. And I, I, I wanted to deliver for them the right, doing the right thing. Some people didn't like the right thing, but honestly, they were very patient. They've been supportive and they're now excited as all get out, so. And, and I know that there's, there's always so many things going on, especially on a weekend like this when, when your time uh, is precious and you're being pulled. But can you appreciate, uh, it's hard not to appreciate on a day like this, the, 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 the absolute beauty of this campus and, and this moment, but, but I hope you're, you're able to. Oh, my goodness. We just dedicated ribbon cutting on the other side of the stadium of this new Xena complex for engineering. So there's a lot going on, but it's all interrelated. You know, the uh, nuclear engineering department is soaring, so is the baseball team and the football team and the basketball teams. We, had, we were downtown at Market Square for the men and women's basketball teams. I, I, it's just our enrollments are through the ceiling. I don't know if you've heard about that, but we're growing like crazy. So it all works together, I believe. So we're in a good place. The, I like to say it this way. This university is on the rise. You're one of our alums. I want you to feel good about this place. I want well, you to root for Tennessee. How's that? Uh, well... <laughs> Well, somebody I, I was interviewed the other day, uh, one of the Tennessee uh, former student athlete, and she, she asked me, so well, well, who are you pulling for in this game? And the predictable answer of all of us right. is, well, you know, we are uh, professional journalists and we don't pull. Of course not. Which I say, I can't use the word, but th that's complete absurdity. Right. Uh, when you go to a university, uh, you pull for your university. Yes. So the question, the answer to your question is, I'm pulling for the University of Tennessee. All right. Awesome. Uh, Good. Well, I want you to be proud of this place, and I mean that. I say that to alums all over the country. And I was in New York last week, and down in Birmingham, and this is their place. And I want you to be really, really proud of everything happening here. Well, I am, and I, I but. I think it would be disingenuous to say that uh, that alums have always been, and that's one reason why you're here. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, there there was a time when it was it was impossible. It was harder to keep up with the chancellor and president <laughs> of this university than the football coach because they were always in revolution. Well, one thing they told me when I came here was well, they were looking for stability, and the same thing of the president. And he and I are very committed. We're a good team. We work together. And I think people are starting to trust again that, okay, we're not run, gonna run off somewhere to the, some next job. And so that's been a real high priority is for people to feel confidence in the leadership. And Chancellor, that's where I wanna bring sports and athletics back okay. into this because so often, yeah, and, and the university is proud of, there's so many tributaries right. uh, of the University of Tennessee across this state and across the, the country and world. But when you're on a stage like you are on here tomorrow and have been already, mm -hmm. how does that help what happens uh, in, oh. in that tower down the street? You know, so many people come to the university first by watching a game on TV. And it's a cliche to say, well, athletics is the front porch. <laughs> I actually believe it. And I, I'm very um, eager. When you think about what happened here in 2021, our baseball team got hot. And we were just coming out of COVID. And what that did for this oh. whole community, the state, it was our first time to be together. And then that sort of carried over into the fall. Football was good, then basketball. I believe good things feed off each other. Now we're the destination location all across the country for kids to come to school. And I say to people, wait till we're really great at football. <laughs> and then we'll just be off, but off the charts. So it, it all works together for good. And I was talking to I, I, I was talking to a, a leader uh, of a university many years ago, not that long ago, and he 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 had the data uh, that supported the rise of the f football program or whatever program. And and I'm is it just because of the awareness that students well, around the country see and hear? It brings incredible visibility. Look at today, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, College game day is going to be over there. Sure. Three hours. You can't pay for that. No. Kind. And they were, oh, by the way, they were here they three were. weeks ago. <laughs> uh, it's just great recognition. Yeah. Um, and, you know, last time 10,000 students were over there, jazzed up about, wow, Tennessee's really something. Right. And so I think it all just feed, is contagious, feeds off each other. There's the other side of that. And I, I know that the cliches about uh, you know the reason why you pay football coaches because as great as the chemistry professor is he couldn't fill 
Neyland right. Stadium. Uh, how do you counter that? And we, we're, we're talking about the greatness of, of this moment, but you're also responsible to exactly. a thousand other uh, professors and students yeah. and, and, and departments. Well, you know, I was telling just somebody from the athletics department two hours ago over at the ribbon cutting, they were there. Last night at the dinner celebrating that new building, Danny White was there. And that, that, that makes a difference. People see that. And I go to athletic events. Danny is a vice chancellor. He's got a PhD. He's got an MBA. He can talk business. He can talk higher ed. And we're working together. And so I, the faculty appreciate that when it doesn't feel like it's this chasm between us. And I don't want to ruin the party here, but I, but I do want to ask you about this the intersection uh, of intercollegiate athletics with uh, academia beyond this weekend because right. there are so many people who who see the dollar amounts this recent big 10 contract that they they began to think this is not really about what you just got through talking about it's just about uh, cashing a a billion dollar check H how do you counter that uh, because there's plenty of conversation that this is get, this is a runaway train right well, yeah, and I have concerns about it as well. I want it to continue to be student athletes, student athletes. I have concerns about the fact that there's no boundaries around it. Right. And it feels like no one's in charge. And that's never a great feeling. I mean, I think every campus is trying to do the best that they can. Uh, I think it will settle out, but I don't know what it's going to look None of us know what it's going to look like. So those concerns are legitimate that people have, that it, it can't turn into semi-pros. I don't, I don't want it to be that. And, and I realize uh, the market dictates, yeah. but it, there, there, there doesn't really seem to be a disconnect. Uh, I, I, I've had fans say, well, my coach makes more than your coach. Yeah. And, and it all seems ridiculous when yeah. you, when you, and I'm sure when, when you're at faculty meetings and they're complaining about what they're making, it makes it even more ridiculous. But is there anything you say, you, you can say to them uh, because you know they, they all do a lot of great work and it's important and it's and some of it can be worldwide recognition to a school like this right but the only thing I can say that and I don't know how much it really helps is on any given campus the faculty don't make the same so your business faculty are making a lot more than the people te teaching in humanities is that right it's what the market dictates sure. so to some extent we we bear that out in our own disciplines so, and that's, that's a bit of what, if you want to be competitive in the business school, you got to pay the same salaries that Wharton's paying and right. that Berkeley's paying, that kind of thing. And the same thing is true in athletics. Now, I don't know how far that goes, but that's my one response to it. Well, it's a good response. Um, and again, I, I, you, you know a lot more faculty members yeah. than I do, but... Uh, I think our faculty here, I don't hear them really complain about okay. it a lot. Last week, the provost had a big function where all the head coaches came and met all the faculty who wanted to show up. Faculty love that. And I think when you can do small things like that that make a difference to try to bring us together, it helps. So uh, I'll ask you this before you go. You, okay. you talked about this university people can be proud of. How do you, how do you take this moment, which is a big one, and and continue it because you want to broaden it. Uh, it's it's about more than whether Tennessee wins the SEC or or not. Uh, I, I, this is the way I think about it. I want us to be the best version of ourselves in everything that we're doing. Okay. We talked to Freshman about that when they very first come here. It has nothing to do with athletics, but the striving for excellence in all that we do, that's what takes this university to the next place. That's my goal. So. When you watch it starting to happen in some of the sports, and many of our sports right now, I've even mentioned, you know, soccer and all that kind of stuff, it, 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 it's contagious. And so I, I think we're on a great trajectory, and I'm just really honored to be the chancellor and be here, be your chancellor. Well, I, I, I can't, uh, I, I have no response other than that okay. we are proud, uh, okay. and I think everybody is. And uh, Chancellor, Thank you. It is so great to see you. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it, Paul. Appreciate pleasure. what you do. The Chancellor of the University of Tennessee.